Welcome back, part two, the finale. Okay, I have to have a confession to make. You remember I told you about the normal maps setting the dance segments? You don't get stretching, you do get stretching, so my excuses there. And that pretty much the respawner in the works. So I'm thinking, how the hell do can I make this modular without having to go through all the cutting? And the answer was staring at me in the face, which was pretty. Uh, I was pretty chuffed last night. Okay, this is your bent segment. So all you have to do is take. See, all you have to do is to take this half. Remember, these are modular on both sides. You could even cut it in half again, 256, and connect it to here using the same procedure. So you'll connect this side to this side. This side you'll rotate, of course, and connect it to here. So you could make that 512. 512. That means you're uh, you're going to sculpt, of course. Your high poly or your low poly, and get your high poly bend, and bring it into Moto and do the same procedure. Only these cuts that you've made on the straight segment, you could, uh, if you want to, you know, make it uh, less less strain on your system. You could cut that again in half in mesh mixer. Just add this as long as you add this to here. Do the same seam repair work, throw it back in the mud box. Same uh, on the left side here at the bottom. Refix the, the seam in mud box, re sculpt it, and then you've automatically got straight parts connecting the bands without seams in your normal mop. So the mop completely, nor completely modular normal mop. And that would work with. Um, yeah, any sort of bands, if you, if, you know. I explain it a bit better. Yeah, if you've got a straight piece and you want to bend it down, if it's sloping down and sloping up, you could do it the same way. As long as you've got those two parts connected to your high poly sculpt, those two high poly modular ends, it's always going to link up. So there, that's a bit of a clear up, clarification, and the workaround. So let's get cracking into the low poly. That's our high poly. We're going to be baking. That's from part one we did. Let's import the. You remember what we made? What I made in the mud box. Exported it, lower uh, subdivided mesh for the low poly. There it is. Again, clean it up. Clean it up. Okay, and this is, yeah, as far as poly count goes, it's pretty high. Even when you remove all this. So we can go around and just remove loops. which is removing detail. Keep that in mind. I'm actually going to work on the decimated uh, version of the low poly, see if I can get uh, better results. As I said, is it decimated as you've got all this weird triangulation going on, especially if you're sli slicing through it. You do have to do a lot of cleanup, but you get, you know, as you can see, uh, some normals. You can see the normals are pretty even here. If it's decimated, they're really sticking out to the left or the right, and you're, you're going to get a bad scene here. Those uh, two, two 
segments, even if it's copied meat. So there's bound to be a way to solve that. Because the decimated mesh is a closer looking version to your sculpted mesh. And my sculpt, remember, I didn't do any any base work. You know, I shoot a, you, you shoot, pull it out more. There's your before you start adding the sculpt details, you should deform the mess completely. So it does in fact look like a cave or a tunnel. But I didn't do it because of uh, just speed purposes to get through this. Um, same procedure applies on the low poly. I just removed this shift C in Moto, make sure you're snapped. It gives you a nice straight edge. Split that, delete those polys, and the same again on this side. Backspace, Shift C, Slice Tool. Split and remove those polys. Okie dokie. Clean up, of course. Okay, now remember these. Uh, this middle part is going to be rotated, so to get a better join, you could go back an edge here. So that makes that more. This is more. This is flatter. If you're going to get less chance of uh, normal issues. Smooth and issues. The flatter this is, means your mesh is just going to be nice and uh, conformal when you're duplicating it. So, this is our modular cut, split, and we'll just hide this. Again, I just hide things to keep the workflow systematic, to rule out any annoyances which can occur. Again, 180, unhide it. Hide, by the way, is H in Modo. And this we're going to rotate minus 180. Shift U on height. Okay, so now we've got to line these up to the grid, just the same as what, we, what I did with the uh, uh, poly. Again, just hide it. Move them both. Zoom in, make sure it's not the vert is on. And we were two squares down, if I recall correctly. from the outside and from the inside. And just delete those. Bridge, two segments, done. You can export this and uh, check to see if it is in fact modular in Marmoset. But I'm pretty confident that it is. Okay, I'll do a clean up. Okie dokie. Now, UVs. UVs. Just going to use the peeler for this. Works as it should. And clean it up. Get those 
is nice and straight. Yuki. Point to remember, these are now going upwards. You don't want that. You want this these both both these sides running parallel with the U space. For seam reduction. So I'll turn snapping off. If you keep it like this you get nasty seam. Rotate it 90 degrees and fit you these. Don't keep the portion because you want them nice and tight around the edges. And now they are where they should be. That's where UV's done. And that's basically our low poly done. So, first thing to do is set your uh, vertex normals. I don't use smoothing angle. Smoothness 100% is working. No issues at all. Clean up this. And then you're going to have to triangulate before you bake. So any destructive process on you know, on your low poly, you should duplicate your low poly. So if something gets messed up, then you've, you've all also you've, you know, you've got a copy of it to go back to. Um, triangulate, Shift T. You can see her beautiful triangulation you get from Moodle. There is a script for this, I think I've got it here. Um, yep, smart triangulation. Works pretty well. Worked pretty fast with uh, low polys. But the more uh, polys you're trying to triangulate, it takes a lot longer. But it gives you more uniform triangulation. But for this um, tutorial, there's no no real point. It, it, this works. Okie dokie, we've triangulated, get the high poly back in. And you'll see it's slightly out. And a word of, it, uh, a word of warning here, if you do move your low poly, don't touch the high poly. Slightly off. You know, that, that that we have. If you want it, if you're getting the issues in your bake and you you uh, move it slightly off so it's more balanced, then remember to move it back to the same position when you export it, or it won't line up. It will not be modular. But this will do for this uh, quick tutorial. Uh, drop of water here. And we have to set up for baking. I've got things set up here that does it automatically. I can go to click render and bake. And that's my bake size. It's 512, 1K, 2K, 1K. But I'll do it or, uh, manually to show you what you need to do. Okay, this is for Modo. Keep that in mind. I'm going to be using object space. Normals. And I'm going to be converting them in X normal. 
object space in Modo is shading normal output. Color space I leave at none. You can put it on linear if you want. Just leave it at none. Remap pixel values. You have to do that. I'll show you in the channels. Here, remap pixel values. Now it should be set to true. Yes. And open my render view. Select the high poly and the low poly. Make sure your UVs are selected. Moodle will tell you if they're not. Put a render. Oh, first set up your big size. I, I want to stick that up to 2K. As you can see, you can do it. You can, you know, you can set up your own workflow method. Using macros and stuff in order, it's pretty simple to do. Um, 2K. Make sure they're both selected. One more selected. Go to render. I've just got bake here. But I'll show you. Bake from my object to render outputs. I stick it at uh, 9000 here. You can always check it you know, if it's not far enough. Not using the cage as you can see. And you get this. This is not good. We don't want sRGB for our big. I don't get it when I select that option to none, that it automatically goes to sRGB. I just bake it again. And usually, I just if you've, always, you've probably got some maps here, you just click on it and you can change it. Expand and borders, you don't need any borders expanded. Hey, see the difference here? You just turn it off. And again, and that is a strange one because that should actually that was set up to be none. But it doesn't matter. It's solved. You don't have to bake a model, you can bake an X normal. You can even bake a mud box. Mud box is also that object space option which which can be converted to in X normal. So you can uh, the difference here is there a difference? Better safe than sorry. So that's our 2K normal map, nicely modular. He's expanding board rails, so it takes so long. You don't need it for this. Uh, save it. Save it to my textures as a PNG. This is 8 bit. And I just call it OBS, object space. We're done. You can do ambient occlusion in Modo. Modo's really got really nice ambient occlusion baking. Um, actually, one of the best I've seen. But I'm not going to do uh, any uh, color map ID anything. This is just to get these normals out and to show you that it uh, does actually line up and work. Okay, uh, low poly you have to export as an FBX. Low poly. In the normal set, mesh, and then we're going to convert our normal map.
tools, object tangent space converting. Load in the uh, FBX file that you just that I just created. Object space normals, and we're going to create normals. Synced normals, by the way. You can see part, this part of the process is pretty fast. So it's really simple. Close that out. Bring in that normal map. And we're done. It's good enough. If you want, you can dig 4K. It's up to you. And there you go, folks. I think that's uh, acceptable, that little scene. And once this is textured, you don't see it at all. Test the other side. Bring in another one. Why not? And again, there you go. Three parts, fully modular. Still got the reputation there. If you made that detail smaller, it would be less noticeable. And again, you can break it up if you spend more time on it. So I will close this and we'll do a very quick texture. Stick a texture on there. I'm going to get uh, texel density issues. It's actually something that uh, I feel is not very well documented on the net. It would be nice if somebody did a nice uh, tutorial. Ah, of course, Quixel needs an OBG. But you'll see in a second. And the more uh, maps you throw at Quixel, the better it functions. It's just a matter of good enough. Let's keep it quick. <coughs> And you don't have to use clicks, so you can do it the old school way. Get your, uh, create your textures. There's loads of tutorials on the internet on how you do it. In one way, you will get, um, in my opinion, you'll get a better texture. Quality will be better. Or you could paint to the mud box or uh, substance painting. You've got so many options these days, it's ridiculous. system Okie dokie. 
just bring this up. I sometimes get this with uh, the it just doesn't show up. That's pretty, you know, there it is. But uh, textual density, it just looks really cheap and nasty. <laughs> but anyway, I'll, I'll export this just for the sake of it. Um, Throw it back into Marmoset. Sky Browser, it's cool. to the Quixel files where's the normal here we go Microsoft schools Not great. It's just this example, but you can see the normals that are they're working pretty well there. And of course, it's modular, so you could do the same thing as with uh, your normal map with your diffuse the texture. You, know, you could add different details and make a couple of variations, so it's not all just looking the same. Uh, let's do a test quickly. Twenty-four done. So there you have it, folks. That's the. <laughs> the cheap looking end result. And as I said, it might be a bit uh, monotonous for some people or a bit tedious, but uh, it's another way to get modular pieces into your game level. And keep bear in mind the uh, solution that told you how to fix this up, bounds and stuff. As long as you keep that um, one segment, join them together, and then you can bake that all down onto your little poly, and you're always going to get that the same. The ends are always going to line up on both directions, which is lovely. So you, you know, you could change the the, you know, the the thickness here. You could stretch this. And or make it more bumpy. Do more work on your sculpt. I recommend you do that. Instead of just, you know, sculpt and I detail immediately. Pull it out just like you would do with rocks. And I hope this has been useful for some of you. 
I've actually enjoyed uh, working on it. And I actually enjoyed doing this tutorial. It was uh, surprisingly painful. And I hope you guys can grow in this. Maybe you can find new ways of doing things, quicker ways. And for me, that's a, that's a wrap. Thanks. Bye-bye.